Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I got a hot one for you. Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 through 27. Now this is going to be in depth so it's going to take a few videos to carry out this subject matter. All right listen to this. Now this was a sermon in a pulpit. I go all the way through but since we have folks on YouTube with a very short attention span I figured I would do little short spurts and increments so that you get a little nugget here, a little nugget there, and yeah, okay, here we go. <laughs> Starting at verse 13. Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravening ravening wolves you shall know them by their fruits i'm going to repeat that ye shall know them by their fruits. Key point. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is honed down and cast into the fire. Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Repeat. Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have, do have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wondrous works, or wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Do you get it? Pat's two cents. Do you get that? Okay, we're going to go back and we're going to go through this thing step by step. Because I want to make sure you don't miss a dot or a tittle of what this thing is implying. Let alone saying. Alright. Mm. Now, it's easy to go with the crowd. The crowd is usually going to be, they're going to go on the wide road. The wide road is where everybody's doing it, everybody says it, everybody likes it. That's the end thing. That's the worldly way of doing things. Now, point. There is a difference between worldliness and secularism. Worldly music, worldly movies, worldly material of any kind, worldly type clothes, worldly type dances, whatever. They pull you away from the ways of God, from the ways of righteousness, and nudge you into sin. 
secularism has ba it's human it's 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 got there's some philosophy mixed in there there's some truth mixed in it there's nothing that is uh corrupted with a sinful underlying demeaning uh intent so to speak now the intention is good all right now so you get some love songs that you could sing and it doesn't make you feel like you got to hop in the bed with Tom, Dick, and Harry. It doesn't make you feel like you got to feel all over Sally's boobs and, and, and Jane's boobs and all the boobs you see. You know, you don't dream of swimming through oceans of boobs. You know, you just listen to a beautiful love song that really is from the heart. And it is pure. It's beautiful. With a clean message. All right. That's a secular song. Now, I just want to clear that up real quick. Now we're going to move on to the next one. Because straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Why? Because we, as people, follow the old adage that says, monkey see, monkey do. Yeah. And we tend to do what the masses do. But see, the masses follow the, the trends of the world, of worldliness. And that's where you get caught. Now, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Now, one of the YouTube uh, uh, subscribers sent me a link to a, move, to a, a YouTube video. This thing blew me away. This was an old country bumpkin preacher. He had to be in his 70s or 80s. Country bumpkin to the max. And he was talking about how he was going to protect the young ladies. And he was talking some nonsense. It wasn't about anything. He gets a little girl to come up. She's just developing here, you know, getting a little plump around the boob area. And the parents are sitting there in the church. This is what I'm talking about, ravening wolves. All right? Preaching the gospel. And he puts his hands on her boobs and talks about nobody should be touching these but me. I mean, it didn't matter what he said. I don't even know exactly what he said. But it was almost like he was saying, I'm going to protect these. Come on. They don't need protecting. She's got her parents. You keep your little dirty old nasty hands to yourself. That's a man preaching the gospel, pastoring a flock of people that are sitting there watching him pat on this little girl's boobs. Can you imagine how creeped out that little girl must have felt? She's being molested in front of the whole congregation and the whole congregation. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Oh, come on. She can't be that dumb. All right. Moving right along. He goes up another video. He calls a woman out. She stands in the aisle. He tells her to tell her husband what he did because he thinks if he keeps everything appearing to be in the light, nobody will suspect anything. This is what I say. If you do that in front of people, what the heck are you doing in private when nobody's looking? He pulls this woman out. She stands in the aisle trusting Oh, I want her to slap both of them. And as she's standing there, he walks up to her, bends down, and presses his head into her boobs. What was the point of that? Other than he's a dirty old man. Now, I don't care what you say about him preaching the word. The Bible says you know them by the fruit they bear. You got a man up there touching body parts and, and pressing up. He's got a thing for boobs. He's a horny, dirty old man. 
and they're too naive to see it because he's coming in sheep's clothing. He's wearing the godly, the, the, the godly, the godly mantle of a minister of the gospel. Well, let me tell you something. I had a friend. I'm going to tell you something else about a, a bearing fruit. You better watch people's fruit. It's not passing judgment. It's called watching fruit, being discerning. You don't sit there like a dummy and take everything people say while they're talking about praising God. If they got their hand on a man's penis, guess what? And the man's not her husband, that's bearing bad fruit, baby. That's sin. I don't care how much they praise God. I don't care how accurately they prophesy. They can prophesy, prophesy, lie, prophesy, whatever. They can prophesy, fly as far as I'm concerned. If they're touching stuff and playing with stuff and dabbling in mess and, 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 and men playing on the internet and playing with themselves while they're watching body parts, um, come on. Okay. There's, a, there's enough of this filth in the body of Christ. It is ridiculous, and it is a stench to God's nostrils. All right. Now, I'm going to say this to qualify what I'm saying, so you understand. There is a difference in practicing and flaunting from falling and stumbling into something. You can stumble into a sinful situation and get caught up in the moment for the moment and get out of it and ask God to forgive you and forsake it but there are people who don't just get caught into it they march right in with their eyes wide open uh, making provisions for the flesh to, to sin to commit sins comfortably no conviction no sorrow no godly sorrow that's what they do. Now, I'm sitting in a meeting, a meeting, a business, a, listen, business meeting. A man, a married man, is standing up in front of the group, sharing his proposal. Mm-hmm. A woman who I happen to know, who I just got through praying with the night before, and she hallelujah and glory to God and praise and amen, and oh, she prayed a beautiful prayer. She sounded downright spiritual. And we were sitting there in this business meeting with other people that we didn't even know. Now here's the trip. She told me privately, that they had had a little thing going in the past. But she had to break it off because he was a married man. Okay. So that's fine. You broke it off. Why are you sitting in the meeting? Fruit, fruit. Here's some fruit. Rotten fruit. Why are you sitting in the meeting with a sheer blouse, no bra, and you could see every detail of nipple and boob and everything. I mean, I, I almost gasped when I saw her. I had to do everything in the world to maintain my cool. And guess where she sat? Right on the front row with her legs crossed and showing her stuff. For him. And I'm thinking, what? Before I knew it, she was back in the saddle with him. They were back playing house in no time. I cut that sister loose like she was a disease. I will not associate with that. Now, I'm not a goody goody two shoes. I have fallen. But I don't set up my address there. This woman set her address up there. I'm not talking about being so perfect you never fall. Everybody falls. Everybody, you know, does boo-boos, commits sins, and then gets there. What the heck am I thinking? Let me get my act together. I don't want to lose out on God. 
For what? There's nothing worth losing God for. I don't care how well hung they are or how big the boobs are. It's not worth it, you guys. Or how much money you can make. It's not worth it. All right. But this woman set up camp. She sat there like a Jezebel and posed for him with the boobs. I mean, she might as well. It was so embarrassing because these were strangers. She might as well. I, I would have been embarrassed if it had just been me. And these are strangers. And she's sitting there. You could see the boobs from across the room. It was so sheer. Almost as ridiculous as wearing stockings over. I mean, it was sheer. You guys, when I say sheer, I mean almost buck naked sheer. I couldn't believe the audacity of her claiming the name of Jesus and seducing this man with everything she could. <sighs> Married man yet. Bad enough if he was single. That's bad. Married. Worse. Now, I say to you, what fruit are you bearing? What little tiddly wink games are you playing on the outskirts of sin? What little uh, avenues and hidden uh, dead end alleys are you going down to commit your little nastiness, your little naughty ways? And then you, you dust yourself off and come back into the church and sit there and hallelujah, glory to God in Zion. Yeah, right. You better zip them pants up and act like you got some sense. Quit playing with God. He Listen, he said, my spirit will not always strive with you. Doesn't that scare you? 